I'm Charity Heimerman, and this is the last day of our webinar. So before I get into the core of my, of my class, let's go ahead and read this out loud. Can, can everybody see this first of all? I know this plant is here. <laughs> we'll work around it. We've got a self-control going on here. Okay, let's go. One, two, three. Early learning, is it really that important? So that's a question we're going to be thinking about throughout this whole class. Early learning, is it really that important? Okay. Now this is actually probably one of the most important aspects, most important aspects in this program. Teaching little, little, little babies moral character. Yes. I learned from the experience with my granddaughter. I raised her from a baby. And whenever I had to say no, I would take the time to explain to her why it was no. And it's very important because she learns who her caretaker is. She learns the personality as well as you're learning. You're teaching her. Right. Him. You learn as you teach your child. I saw another hand. Yes. Say because um, at a young age, if you start teaching them younger, they don't have the opportunity to learn the negative way. So they're gonna always remember the positive way right. you're teaching them. It's an excellent answer, and we're gonna come back to that because I like that. Answer. Yeah, let's clap. Let's clap for that. Okay. Yes. Um, they're really receptive at a young age, they and they can retain a lot of information when they're younger. So it would instill in their brain in the future. That's true. They're very receptive. And a lot of people tend to think babies, they don't know. You know, they just Google Gaga all the time. They just, little, just kind of sit there the whole time, eat, nurse, uh, sleep, poop, whatever. And that's all they think it's all about. But like she said, it's, they're very receptive. And they are very aware of their surroundings. How many of you are parents? Or... Um, know a child or just seen any child walking around before, you know that they're very visual, right? They watch everything around them. And I've had the opportunity to be able to teach um, little, little, little children before. And they pick up on every teeny little thing that you do. Even, even the not so great things they pick up on. It's usually those things that they pick up on is those, uh, the, and I had a little girl actually do that one time because I was on the side and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Not even two minutes later, she, she's, she's by her desk and she's like, oh, what am I going to do? And I, and you just, and all you can think about is, oh, what did I just do? So that's why it's very important, it is important, that we teach them that moral character at that young age, even through our example. And I know that's what all of the teachers have been saying from the very beginning, that the most important thing is what we do, not what we say. Because you can say, hey, you need to have some self-control. <laughs> that, that, wasn't, that wasn't very controlled. You notice how I, my voice is loud and I'm, I'm lunging at her. My eyes get a little bit big, my voice gets very high. It's not what you say that they get, it's what you do. Your body language. And like she said, they're very receptive. And by the age of five or six, they already have their character traits, their personality traits already within them. So if we want to sit our child in front of the boob tube when they're five and six and they're playing their video games, Pow, pow, ping, bang, bang, boo, boo, whatever. That's what's going to come out of it. Have you ever seen a little child running around pl playing guns and, guns and robbers or whatever? Have you ever seen that before? Little, little, little ones. And at that time, it's just their little fingers they're playing with or little sticks outside. But what occurs when they get older? Those things become real then they take them to school or they take them to work. Their boss upset them. Their teacher made them mad. So-and-so said what to me? So now 
bang, bang becomes a real thing. So we have to be very careful in what we put in front of our children. That's why, I'm going to keep saying this, teaching our little ones is very important. Putting forth all of the positive character traits. Okay, I did hand out some cards in the beginning. And if you have number one, if you could be so kind to come up to the front and read your cards. <laughs> Ownership. Ownership and asking go hand in hand. They both build a respectful character. Do we agree with that? All right, let's clap if we agree with that. And I want you to notice what we're going to, you're going to see a pattern here on what exactly we're doing with this. Ownership. Do you remember our teachers teaching us about that in the beginning of this webinar? It's a very important uh, concept in the peaceful solution. For one thing, just understanding this concept will teach our children to be respectful, to have that self-control, not to just touch things. And then it'll go over into, their, into adulthood even. That's why wars are started, right? I remember one of the teachers said uh, they, they fight over oil or what, uh, diamonds or whatever it is. That's not even theirs. Number two. Who has number two? Okay. Number two, asking. Asking plays an important role in life. It teaches respect to people and their possessions, which will help the whole world eventually. Do we agree with that? All right, let's give a hand. Asking plays an important role in life. It teaches respect to people as well as their possessions. Okay, and that will, will help the entire world. Asking. It's such a simple concept, yet it's not practiced very often in society, right? Number three. Number three. Ooh. Self-control. Yep. The only person you can control is yourself. Learning to develop and practice self-control on a consistent basis and in all situations is a long-term process. Do we agree with that? Self-control. Self-control is a very important aspect in teaching our children. How many of you have ever seen a child lose self-control? Nobody? No, just five, four people. <laughs> How many of you have lost self-control? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> but it's very important to teach that self-control. That we teach our children that they can control themselves. This is something that we don't see in society today. Why do you think it's important? Yes. If you keep your self-control, you gain cringe. If you do not, you push them away. Yep, that, that's so true. When you practice self-control, you keep friends. You gain friends. Yes, yes. If you practice self-control, you won't harm yourself or anybody else. Right. If you practice self-control, you won't harm yourself or anyone else. And that's an important, um, that's a great point. Self-control. Do you kind of see where we're going with this? You will. Number four. <laughs> Number four. Respect. All life deserves respect. Don't give respect to get respect. Give respect because it's the right thing to do. Do we agree with that? Great. Respect. All life deserves respect. All life. It doesn't matter if it's Big, small, got big teeth, whatever it is, they all deserve respect. And don't give respect to get respect. Have you ever heard people saying that they, they, you need to respect me, and at the same time they're being completely and totally disrespectful to that person? Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Give respect because it's the what? It's the right thing to do. And when we do, and when we're respectful to others, our children will see that. And they do see it. Remember in the beginning when we said that our children are very receptive and that they pick up on every little thing that we do? Not what we say, but what we do. I remember that respect. Um, number five. Number five. Number five. What is number five? My Acceptance. tape. Acceptance. 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 Prejudice stems from ignorance. Thank you very much. Do we agree with that? Yes. Prejudice stems from ignorance. 
Who would like to give us a little bit about what you think that statement means? We just had acceptance just a few days ago. Prejudice stems from ignorance. Yes. Accepting people for who they are, things that they can't change about themselves, like accents or just, you know, the clothes they wear. Right. Color, uh, skin color, you know, how tall they are, how short they are, how big or small or whatever it is. I have a hand over here. It also stems from, like, somebody who's a foreigner. You treat them with prejudice because they're from a different country, but it, it, it's not a fault that they're born in another country. Right, foreigners, people who don't live here, right? We tend to think that uh, what's right, uh, what is that one? Um, if you're not white, you're not right. You ever heard that before? All those types of things like that. That, that, that that's where that ignorance comes from. Rich and poor. Rich and poor. Oh, we see that a lot. Educated, not educated, right? There, there's that whole thing where people don't accept others for who they are. Well, you're poor, so you can't be my friend. You ever had that before? Maybe in school, you ever, you know, oh, the popular children, right? oh, the popular kids, they got the nice fancy clothes, they got the nice car, you got the, you know, the, you know, puke green pinto out in the parking lot, and, you know, they're, <laughs> they're pulling up with their 2012 Tahoe with the rims all, and they're cool. You ever, you know, people want to hang out with them. You know, you're, you're, you're sputting around in your car and nobody likes you because you got that pinto and not that fancy car but does it matter what you drive or how you dress or maybe what you how your your accent or whatever it is what really matters your character what's inside so that person with that fancy car odds are their character may not be all that great how many of you have ever met any but those popular children? They weren't they weren't the friendliest, were they? No. All right, let's go to number six. Number six. Responsibility. If we strive diligently to acquire a responsible character, we create the possibility of a world where everyone can be successful. Successful. Thank you. So, do we agree with that? Responsibility. Let me read that for you one more time. If we strive diligently to acquire a responsible character, we create the possibility of a world where everyone can be successful. Responsibility. This is sometimes a very difficult thing to teach sometimes to our young children. But who can give me some ideas on how we could teach our children how to be responsible? Remember, we're talking about early learners, and that's you know, little babies up to about five. What do you think we could do to teach our children to be responsible? I think we can teach them to pick up their things and put them away and know that it's their possessions. They own it, so they should take care of it so they can have it in the future. Exactly, and you brought in that ownership, right, that they should take care of their possessions. Pick up their things when they're done. I saw another hand. I mean... Come this way. I would say by example. I think if we constantly let them know why we do the things we do, they will have an idea of what they should do when we're not around. Yes. Excellent. Let's give a let's give a clap for all of our people. <laughs> Through our example. And that's a very you know, like we said before, our example is a very important thing. If they see us cleaning up after ourselves, for example, that's something that they're gonna do. Right? If they if they see us uh, taking care of our possessions then that's something that they're going to do. If we just uh, walk into our house and throw trash all over it, odds are our children will probably do the same thing. Hey, go clean your room! And the house is all messy. Have you ever seen something like that before? Right? Responsibility. I saw another hand. I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, fulfilling your obligations and letting your, you know, yes be a yes to, you know, scenarios and stuff right. like that. Keeping your word. Keeping your word. That's an excellent way of teaching them responsibility. Yes. I was going to say just keeping them on a routine from day one. Right, like routine. Constant routine. Yeah, a routine is very excellent for a child, and that's something that they really can grow from. And I know for me, when I've had um, taught the, the, my little early learners, um, something that I did was I was consistent. And after you're done with your lunch, pack up your lunch kit, Wipe off your table, la, 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 la. And it was something that after, you know, after a couple of weeks, they, they caught on. You know, they would just, 
oh, can I get the broom? Oh, can I get the cloth? Uh, da, da, da. And it was something that was really great, you know, to see within them because you see these little two-year-olds willing to pick up after themselves. Normally, you don't really see that very often, right? But when you're consistent and you teach them to be responsible to clean up after yourself, then they, they do it and they continue to do it as they grow. Yes. Use a set of house rules that you could teach your child. Um, if you sleep on it, make it up. Teach them how to make their bed. If you eat out of it, wash it. If you drop it, pick it up. Put it back where you got it. If you teach your children these house rules as you go from little bitty ones up, then you don't have problems later on. So true. Something as simple as that. You sleep in it, uh, make your bed. You drop it, pick it up. Something so simple. Uh, yes. And time management. When they're little, it's time to read. It's time to go to bed. But as you get older, add the time to it. You need to be here at 4 o'clock. Let's leave the house at 3.30 so that they can learn that being on time is important. Right. Excellent. Time management. I love that. Yes. And you can teach them responsibility by and add fun to it, you know, add, um, make it a, a game, you know, even when they're little, you know, can you help me find your toy box, you know, yes. or um, can you tell me where the block goes, or, um, you know, things like that, and as they get older, you know, okay, well, what come, goes on the bed besides the pillow, you know, and just make it interesting for them that they'll want to interact and learn right. that responsibility. Right, that's an excellent point. Make it exciting for them. Make, make responsibility or, or just even building that moral character exciting for them. Because when you say, okay, we're going to learn about character today. <laughs> what is own? You know, they're not it, children. They they need some kind of stimulation. <laughs> That's why sometimes you gotta ah, jump around and make all kinds of you know noises or whatever it is to get their attention. And it's very true. I know from the first time I taught them, I was the kind of person where, oh, what is honesty? And they can't even read yet, right? And you're asking something like that. So you have to be really aware of how to come across to them, making it exciting. Yes. Thing that you have to learn to teach your children to because as they go out in school, as they get a little older, they at school, they normally come home with homework. Yes. You have a set of time when they should do their homework if you say, okay, you come home, you take your snack first or you take your show first. You have to get a specific time because when they, if they choose to do their homework anytime, sometimes they choose to do it when they're very sleepy, they can't do it. So you teach right. them to be responsible. Also, like my friend say, Time management. time management. Oh, yes, that's a very, very important thing. Yes. You know, when she said do what you're supposed to do, it reminded me of the word prioritize. Yes. And even as little as two and three, you can say to them, what do we have to do versus what do you want to do? Right. And then they learn we have to get dressed before we can eat breakfast. Right, prioritize. That's an excellent way of teaching them that responsibility. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who was number seven? Honesty. Honesty builds a great reputation. Honesty builds a great reputation. Do we agree with that? Absolutely, yes. How do you think honesty builds a great reputation? Do we like liars? <laughs> I'm looking at you. How does it build a great reputation? Yes. Well, if you're honest, then people are going to be able to trust you. Yes, trust. Trust. That's a big little word, if you can imagine what that means. Trust. Honesty builds trust. Yes. Also, when you're honest, you prove yourself trustworthy fear and also you gain the respect of others because yes. when say for instance you have a situation where they put something up and they see you didn't remove it or say you bring back change them because I had that experience where I went to the store and I had more than my fair share and I return it and I, and I was trying to explain to the cashier you pay me more than I would do if I pop open <laughs> and I realized and then he showed this appreciation you gain others respect right you gain respect you gain respect. When you're honest, you gain respect. And that's a true statement there. That's a very true statement. Anyone else? 
knows why honesty builds a great reputation. Because it's, it's, it's really hard to get a positive reputation back once you've damaged it. Do you, do you agree with that? Right? Maybe you made one mistake and all of a sudden that's like the end of the world. Nobody likes you. Nobody trusts you. Everyone, oh, you know what that girl did the other day? It's very hard to get it back. But if you can already, you know, if you have it and you maintain it through the peaceful solution, then you'll always have that great reputation. Yes, honesty. Practice honesty with your children. They will pick up on it and they will grow up honest. Right, that's true. If you teach them when they're young to be honest, they'll, they'll grow up to be honest people. They won't be liars and robbers and all these types of people, cheaters, right? And it starts really young. And we've seen that in our children, even in our society. Yes. And in difficult situations, you can usually count on somebody who is honest to pick up the slack and to take responsibility where others that are not so trustworthy you would leave that responsibility to them. Right. Then you would be able to trust them with certain responsibilities, and that's a big thing. Do you see how teaching our children how we've stemmed off into adulthood? That if we don't teach them those things when they're young, oh, the consequences are dire. So we are on number eight. Who has number eight? So I have patience. It says, when taught, practice, and live every day, this will become a part of who you are and who you want your child to become. Do we agree with that statement? Let me read that to you one more time. It says, patient. When taught, practiced, and lived every day, this will become a part of who you are and who you want your child to become. Oh, yes, patient. Patient. Our teacher the other day said, we're all around in patience. Sprinkle it on, whatever you got to do, because patience is sometimes a very difficult, okay, well, not sometimes, it's always a difficult thing for even adults to be patient. And if we can practice it ourselves, if we can teach it and live it every day, we'll see it in our children. And that, 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 that'll really help us as parents, right? That'll help you as a teacher or whatever aspect that you deal with children, to be patient with them. Remember, it's through our actions, not our words. Be patient. Hey, be patient. Would you be patient? Does that sound patient at all? <laughs> Man, just be patient. Wait. But if we can show our children through our actions that we are patient, then that's something that they will become as well. Number nine. Number nine. Oh, do we see what we're building here? Yes. It's the word humble. Be humble shows a character of respect and self-control. Humble. Do we agree with that? Yes. Oh, yes. Humble. Being humble shows a character of respect and self-control. How? Yes. Well, I know that I'm not a perfect parent and I make mistakes and I always apologize to my children when I see that I've set maybe the wrong example or I've made a mistake in a judgment or right. something. I always say, I'm really sorry. Would you please forgive me? And that teaches them that. Humble. That humble. That's exactly, that's the perfect answer. Let's give a clap for that. Because when we can apologize to our children, because sometimes it's very difficult to go in front of a, a child and tell them you're sorry that you made a mistake. Have you ever had to do that? How many of you have ever done that before? Is it, is it an easy task to just go up to a child and, no, it's, it's really hard because, yeah, yeah I, I'm the adult. I make all the right uh, choices, and I say all the right things, and it's, it's not an easy thing. I've even found myself in that situation where you go, oh, I'm so I'm sorry. You know, it's hard. It really is. But that's a great way to do it. Yes, humble. It's them to be humble. It'll be easier when they're older for other people to work with them. Oh, yes. Let's give a clap for that. Humble. If you teach them to be humble, it makes, it makes it easier for other people to work with them when they get older. Oh, yes. We don't like to work with people who are constantly confrontational, do we? I just want to say what um, Betty is trying to say. Um, 
when you apologize to your children, when you done something wrong, because you're doing it constantly, it become an easy thing to do because I do it for my children. And it does not take that hard for your children to apologize when they do something wrong. Right. It become an easy thing within the home or to anyone else there around. Right. Excellent answer. If you didn't hear, she said that when you teach them that and you're, you know, when you teach them to be humble consistently, it becomes easier. It does. Just like when you're, when you're learning moral character, if you're learning to have self-control, the first time it's very hard, you know, or what, you know, what, you try to breathe and breathing doesn't really help. But as time goes on, you can kind of give yourself talk, right? Okay, I'm going to control myself. I'm not going to lose control or um, asking. Sometimes it's not very hard to ask. We just want to take things sometimes. Oh, they, 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 don't, they don't mind. I'm just going to use this really fast. But as we are consistent with it, and we teach our children that consistency, then it does become easier. Yeah. I think it also teaches them, you know, a lot of the, the ones that we have up there, like respect. Your child will have some respect for you. And when they see you, you know, humble, you know, and, you know, it, it brings them to, into focus all of the, the other building blocks up there. Right. Because they see that in you. They see, see that mommy he makes mistakes too, so it's okay. Right. That's an excellent answer. Yes. And I think children, as was taught in yesterday's lesson, are so forgiving. And when you go in sincerity to your child and say, I'm sorry, I missed it, I was abrupt or I was angry or I, you know, I, I used too harsh a tone when I talked to you, and you're looking them right in their eye on their level, and you see them almost like a, a weight is lifted off, and they say, Mommy, I forgive you. Yeah. Of course I and And it makes you feel like, what, you know, to make you want to be that much more forgiving when someone comes to you or even when they come to you. Oh, excellent. Let's give a hand for that. Yes. Forgiving. And they are. They're just so innocent. And they don't ever hold a grudge. You know, they're so loving. You can get on to them, and two minutes later, they're, they want to give you a hug. You, that, that's just within them. They're just innocent children and that's why it is important that we teach them that because it, at that age they are innocent they, they don't know any better so we have to teach them to know better so when they get older they'll know what is better do you see where I'm going with that they'll know that all these little building blocks builds up to something very positive positive. and who has my last block and I believe that's number 10 Peace, and peace is only through the peaceful solution. Do we agree with that? Oh, yes. Let's give a nice hand for that. Peace. So ultimately, all of, uh, all of these character traits that we learned this seven days of the peaceful solution webinar will bring what? Peace. Peace. It will. And you'll see it not only within your lives, not only with your children, with your little early learners, but within society as well. And it's so important, my friends, that we are so um, adamant to teach our children these positive character traits of ownership, asking, self-control, responsibility, all of these things, because ultimately it will bring what? Peace. And that's something that every single one of us desires within our own lives, and even within society, to be able to walk outside and not be afraid or not to be scared to send our children outside to go to the school bus stop or whatever the case may be. That we can live in a world that is safe and free of hatred and intolerance and all of those things that is around us today. So let's teach our children, let's teach our little early learners, our little babies, Moral character, let's teach them the self-control, the acceptance, honesty, all of these things, and we will have peace. So I want to thank you for your time and all of your participation, and get this book. Get all of the books in The Peaceful Solution to help us bring peace to the world today. Thank you very much.